Thank you for joining me at Tantrum House Studio D. I'm Melissa Delp. Do you want to be the greatest among the gods? Learn how in this how to play video for deities. <laughs> is a drafting, tile placement, resource management, area majority game for two to four players that takes about an hour to play. It's designed by Gary Kim and published by Mandu Games. They sponsored this how to play video. In Deities, you're placing village tokens on the board to collect resources. Then you're using those resources to construct buildings, which will increase your influence and hopefully earn you points. At the end of the game, the player with the most points wins. In this video, I'm going to cover setup, gameplay, and scoring. I've included timestamps to help you navigate to each section. Let's start with the setup. First, place the board in the center of the table. Then place a sanctum tile in each corner space. Make sure the white colored side is face up. It shows higher point values than the other side. Next, prepare the village tokens. There are three types, rice wood, rice stone, and stone wood. If you're playing with two or three players, you need to return some of the tokens to the box. One of each type for three players and two of each type for two players. Place all of the remaining tokens in the bag. Now randomly fill the center four spaces with village tokens. The spaces are highlighted on the board. Make sure that one of each of the three types of village tokens, rice wood, rice stone, and stone wood is placed. It doesn't matter which side is face up. For your first game, this specific arrangement is recommended. If you're playing with just two players, you'll need to add some ruin tokens and extra village tokens to the board. The rulebook shows two possible arrangements. Prepare the development display by separating the four point development tiles into a stack and then shuffling the rest of the tiles to form a draw pile. Reveal four tiles from the draw pile and place them by the stack of the four point tiles. Prepare the Disciple display by shuffling all the Disciple tiles to form a draw pile and then reveal five tiles. Create a supply of resources near the board. There are coins, rice, wood, and stone. Place the round marker in front of the one space on the score track. The player seated closest to the round marker is the first player. That's the general setup. Now it's time for the player setup. Each player takes a player board and the matching colored buildings. The circular walls go in these spots, the middle temples go here, and the towers, the top pieces, go here. Place each player's score marker on the zero space on the score track. Each player draws a village token from the bag and keeps it hidden from the other players. Shuffle the Providence tiles and deal two to each player. Each player looks at their tiles and chooses one to keep as a secret endgame goal and discards the other tile. Return unused and discarded tiles to the box, keeping them face down. If you're playing with two players, the second player starts the game with a coin. And that's all of the setup. Now let's talk about gameplay. Here's the big overall picture. In deities, players will be taking turns starting with the first player and going clockwise around the table. On your turn, you first place a village token on the board and activate a divine line. Then you may construct buildings. And finally, you end your turn by drawing a new village token. Once each player has taken a turn, the round ends and you move the round marker. The number of rounds you play is shown on the board. Seven rounds for four players, eight rounds for three players, and nine rounds for two players. The first player never changes. You just keep taking turns around the table. After you've finished the final round, or you've triggered the end of the game in another way, you'll perform end game scoring and the player with the most points wins. 
I'll explain other endgame triggers and scoring later in the video. Now, let's take a closer look at what you can do on your turn. First, you have to place the token from your hand onto a space on the board. You can choose either side of the token, but you have to follow these placement restrictions. The token must be placed next to another village token. It can go side by side or diagonal. Also, the space you put it in must be empty. The only exception is for a sanctum tile. These do not block spaces, but they do trigger a sanctum scoring, which I'll explain later. If you're playing with ruin tokens, these are used in two player games and can be added as a variant in three and four player games. You can place your token next to them. The final requirement is that your placement must create at least one divine line. This is a super important concept for understanding the game. A divine line is a straight line starting from the token you placed and ending with another token showing the same face up resource as your token. The line must have at least three tokens, two matching ends and at least one token in the middle. Here are a few placements that would create a divine line. I could not place my token here because the line is not long enough. There's no token in the middle. And this spot doesn't work because there isn't a matching token in a straight line. After you place your village token, you must activate one of the divine lines you created. This is the main way to gain resources during the game. You gain the shown resource for the divine line start token, the one you placed on the board, and for the line's ending token. If you've correctly made a divine line, these should be the same type of resource. For the middle spaces, what you gain depends on whether the token has a building on it. For tokens without buildings, you flip the token over and gain the newly shown resource. You can tell what that will be by looking at the design on the bottom of the token. For tokens with walls on them, you gain the resource shown. You do not flip the token. For spaces with temples or towers, the resource is no longer visible, so you gain a coin instead. Temples and towers can never be the end space of a divine line, but tokens with a wall can be at the end, since you can still see the resource token. Whenever you activate a space containing a building, the player who controls the space gains a point. Control is determined by the topmost building piece. In this case, the red player gains a point because their temple beats out the blue player's wall for control. If you activate spaces you control, you still gain the point. Ruin tokens can be used as a middle token in a divine line, but they do not give you any resources and buildings cannot be built on them. With all those things in mind, here's how this divine line would activate. I'd gain a stone for the starting token, and a stone for the ending token. The line ends at this stone, since it's the first matching token. These two middle tiles would flip, giving me a stone and a rice. I'd gain a coin for this building, and since I control the space with my tower, I'd also gain a point. Kevin would get a point for his wall on this space. After you activate a divine line, you can choose to spend your resources to build one or more buildings. This part of your turn is optional. Each building piece shows its cost and resources. When you build a type of building, wall, temple, or tower, you must build from left to right. So I have to build this temple before this one. To get the right combination of resources, you might need to exchange some of yours with the supply. Throughout the game, you can make as many exchanges as you'd like, following the directions on your player board. You can exchange two matching resources to gain a gold, and you can trade a gold in for any one resource. So gold can basically be used as a wild resource, but it's also needed as a specific payment for some buildings. When you build, it has to be on an empty village token or on a building of a lower type. A wall, temple, or tower can go on an empty token. 
A temple or tower can be built on a wall, but only a tower can be built on a temple. You can build on any open village token except the four in the center spaces on the board, the ones with these white outlines. Buildings can never be placed on these. You can build on top of your own buildings or someone else's. Whoever owns the building underneath gains two points. A space can hold at most one wall, one temple, and one tower. When you build a wall, you immediately gain a disciple tile from the display and place it in the wall's slot. The tiles have three main types of benefits. Some give you an immediate resource when you gain them, and then a resource when you place a village token on a specific type of terrain. This one gives wood when you place your token on a water space. Some let you exchange a resource for points, and others let you exchange a resource for a coin. After taking a disciple tile, draw the next tile to refill the display. When you build a temple, you immediately gain a development tile from the display and place it in the empty spot on your board. These tiles will hopefully give you endgame points. There are five main kinds of tiles. Points based on the buildings you've built, points based on the number of spaces you control in the highlighted area, points based on the kinds of terrain you control, points based on the kinds of resources you have at the end of the game, and just four points. These don't have a requirement. After taking a development tile, draw the next tile to refill the display, unless you took one of the four point tiles from the separate stack. After you finish building, you end your turn by drawing a new village token from the bag. If you have more than six resources at the end of your turn, you must discard or trade the extra until you have a maximum of six. Then it's the next player's turn. They start by placing their village token to create a divine line. Earlier, I mentioned that you can place your token on a space containing a sanctum tile which triggers an immediate sanctum scoring. This happens before you activate your divine line. Here's how it works. You remove the sanctum tile and score control for its quadrant of the board. The players who control the most, second most, and third most spaces in the quadrant will receive points. Just a reminder, the player who owns the topmost building on a space controls that space. For this scoring, the purple player controls the most spaces and gains 10 points. The green and red players are tied, but red wins the tie because they have more towers than the green player. Red gets six points and green comes in third, earning two points. If there's a tie-in control that can't be broken by having more towers or topmost temples than the other tied player, the tied players will split the points. Players tied for first will split 16 points, the combined value of first and second place. The player with the next most spaces earns third place. So during the game, there are four main ways to score points, through sanctum scorings, by having divine lines activated that contain spaces you control, by players building on top of your buildings, and by choosing and activating disciple tiles that allow you to exchange resources for points. But there's also a lot of points awarded at the end of the game. In most games, the game will end after the final round. The board shows you how many rounds to play, nine for two players, eight for three players, and seven for four players. But there are two other ways to trigger the end of the game. If all four Sanctum tiles are scored, or if a player builds all of their buildings, you finish the round and then end the game. In all three instances, all players should have had the same number of turns. Now you complete end game scoring. First, you score any Sanctum tiles remaining on the board. Flip the tile to the gray side, showing fewer points. Then score as normal, awarding points for control in that quadrant. Next, you reveal your providence tile, the one you chose at the beginning of the game. If you control the most spaces in the indicated area or terrain, you score six points. If you have the second most, you score three points. 
If there's a tie for first, you score four points. Six plus three divided by two rounded down. Other players do not score any points from your Providence tile. Finally, you score the points shown on your player board. Some spaces award points if you've built that building. All of the towers, the final temple, and the last two walls. The development tiles you've chosen can also earn you points. This one is worth seven points since all four temples have been built. This one is worth five points for one remaining rice. This one is six points for controlling two spaces in the highlighted area. And then this one is just four points. You keep track of your points by moving your marker on the score track. If you go all the way around the track, flip your marker to the 80 points side. Your final score will be 80 points plus the number you're on. Once everyone has counted up their points, the player with the highest score wins. If there's a tie, the player with the most resources wins. If it's still a tie, all tied players win. So that's how you play deities from Mandu games. Will you rise above the other gods to become the highest deity? Thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. What other games would you like to see how to play videos for? Let me know in the comments.